So thank you very much for the kind of introduction, Claudia, and thanks for the video. I'm very happy to be with here, uh, you today, and I'm very happy that all of you uh, followed our invitation to celebrate together with us five years of Bosch e-bike systems in the U.S., which is for us the second highlight of the year. And this little video that we that we were showing here, unfortunately, on a, on a small screen and with a lot of sunlight, this should. Uh, should have brought to you the idea uh, what we did in the past 10 years. And uh, when we entered the bicycle industry 10 years ago, no one had an idea uh, where will this, uh, where will this uh, take us. And from the very beginning, all of, all of us who were involved and, and the team and, the, and the, the two engineers who had the initial idea, they were all passionate about the idea of bringing uh, Bosch technology and uh, Bosch products to the bicycle industry. So when we are here today, gather here today, we want to reflect on some of the milestones about the past 10 years of Bosch e-bike systems, but especially also about uh, past five years being in the in the U.S. market, which is for us a very very important uh, decision that we have taken in 2013. So let's recall a little bit on. Uh, on what we did and why we believe we set the pace. So the theme of the, of the video is we set the pace in everything we do because we were shaping markets together with all of you from the bicycle industry. And by that we were also creating benchmarks. And uh, we, we know that especially in these times of changes in mobility, we also have to act very responsibly in, in all what, what we do. Um, but most importantly, and this is why, why I'm so happy to be in that industry, it's all about passion. We all love what we do, and we all can be very happy to be at this time uh, in this industry because there is a lot of change going on, a lot of transformation worldwide, especially in the inner cities, uh, which have a lot of traffic uh, it, uh, congestion issues. And we also see uh, the contribution we have to society when it comes to people doing more uh, activities, are more, do more exercising, and, and the e-bike helps because, as Gary Fisher says, uh, people love cycling, and with the e-bike we take the hard part away and the, and the fun and the joy that, that remains. And, and our purpose is that we make cyclists smile, and uh, the question is why do they smile when they ride an e-bike? Because we took the hard part away and, <laughs> and, the, f and the fun remains. <laughs> and, uh, and with that, cycling forever has been for all of us uh, a, um, something about independence, being independent from, from the parents when you, are, when you are a toddler and you start to walk and then you sit on the bike and then you are faster than your kids. This is independence. And this is what we all have, have in us from, from being kids, from being young. And therefore, it's, it's cool to have this also now in the kind of the transformation of the bicycle industry and of uh, mobility globally. When we look back into the year 2008 and 2009, this was the time of the uh, financial crisis or the automotive crisis. Uh, me, myself, I was in Detroit, Michigan back then in automotive, very tough times to re try to restructure business. And at the same time, there were two engineers in, in Germany, in Stuttgart, and they had the idea, what can we do with Bosch technology to contribute to the mega trends in society globally, which were urbanization, which is uh, demographic effects with uh, health, uh, con uh, um, environmental topics, and so on. And they had the idea to put an electrical motor, which they found in our uh, automotive portfolio that took electronics and sensors and software, that took a battery from our cordless power tools, and they built a prototype. And this was uh, 2008, and they approached senior management, and senior management said, hmm, come on, wh why should we do this in, in the bicycle industry? Does that make sense? It is a real business for us. We are in automotive. We are a multi-billion business in, in automotive. Why should we spend some resources on, on cycling? It is, it is even, it is even uh, at the end of the day, a positive business case. So they got the task not only to build that prototype, because people, the senior management who was riding the prototype, they were all fascinated. They, they had that smile. And uh, at the 10th anniversary this year in June, our CEO, Volk Mardenna, back then he was a board member, and he said him to himself, he had to convert him from not believing it 
and getting benchmark bikes from, from competitors and riding them with his family over the weekend. And then he said, yeah, that makes sense. This could be the next big thing, as, as we learned. So with that, it was a, a very important decision back then in 2009, still in the, in the economic crisis, to make this huge investment and also to expose the Bosch brand into a totally new market. A consumer-driven, uh, very passionate, emotional market of, of cyclists working together with, with OEs we do not know, like bicycle manufacturers, working together with service partners and dealers whom we had no connection to. So when the startup team got founded and grouped together, Claudia was one of the first of the key team in 2009 to, to, to kick this off. And when we look back and reflect on the key success factors, uh, immediately I have uh, four in my mind. It's one, you have to have the right product. Then second, you have to have the right business model. And then you have to have the right market. Uh, and number four is you have to have the perfect team, an inspired and passionate team. And when we look into the product, this goes back on, on the uh, back to the Bosch uh, core competencies and our theme is uh, the guiding principle of Bosch is invented for life and invented for life says we want our products to spark into the atom improve quality of life and help conserve natural resources. This is what Bosch has written down uh, as invented for life. And I think the e-bike represents perfectly invented for life uh, like no other uh, product of Bosch does. When it comes to the right business model, it was all about getting to know all these business partners and working together with you in the industry, getting to know the first uh, customers, uh, the OE manufacturers, working with Zach Rapful together to develop the first frame interface for our first drive unit, then getting to know how the sales and distribution channel uh, works, working together with distribution partners like, like Magura for the service in Europe, and then going out to get to know dealers, give de uh, dealer training and dealer clinics. This was part of the business model which we had to learn because it's totally different from what we do in automotive, totally different what we do in, in two-wheeler, motorbike and other, other industries. So this collaboration was very important and we only can we cannot thank you enough for your trust and the effort and the support that the whole industry uh, has shown to us and embraced, uh, embraced the team and, and was very open to, to integrate us into the industry. So number three is the, the right market. So the European market back then was already established, but it was a little, little slow. And uh, we found out that once the market, market took off, um, that we do not have only a European market where Germany, Austria, Switzerland were very strong, but we had already back then global customers and we saw there is a small market potential in the US but we didn't know about. And uh, Claudia and Tim, I think you were at the Interbike already in 2011. I joined in 2012. And then all of a sudden in 2013, we had the idea of e-bike goes global. And e-bike goes global, it started on my whiteboard. And uh, we, we draw a sketch of the world map. So this is Europe, this is Italy, this is US. And we f understood, okay, the, the bicycle industry from from the industry, uh, you have to be in, in, in Asia Pacific. You have to be around Taiwan because this is where all the frames and the components are coming from. So in the same time when we decided to go to the US, we knew we have to go to, to Asia as well. So with that, um, Claudia explained yesterday how we did uh, location screening and we were, as I used to live in, in the US for three years, I knew about Detroit and Chicago and Charleston and Palo Alto. These are all, all sites from Bosch and we, know, we knew back then, no, this is not where we want to be, but we have to convince management that we open a new site here in, in Southern California. So this is why we, why we did this field trip, which was, <laughs> which was very important. And, uh, what Claudia mentioned not yesterday is when we were finding the, the new office around the corner when we get to know this couple in San Diego over, over a drink at the bar uh, on New Year's Eve is that we had to hire our first, our first associate, but we hadn't had a plan for the team. 
So at the end of the trip, end of, Janu end of the first week of January, Claudia voluntarily applied to a job that he had posted. she had posted because she said, okay, we need a general manager to run the, the business in the US, why don't I apply myself? And she did. <laughs> Uh, this was not the idea when we were flying out to California, <laughs> but actually, no, you, ha you have her, she will stay. <laughs> she, <laughs> she is on a green card, she is on a, on a national uh, contract with Bosch, so yeah, so we were naive to believe she would ever come back. So. <laughs> but I think she, she's a great fit to the industry, she's a great fit here in the California community, so we are, we are very happy. So what we had to learn the hard way is the US market. And I got, uh, for preparing for today, I got back to my notes from 2014 flying back from Interbike. And uh, I took my notes and I found out there are five critical challenges uh, in the US market and we have to overcome and tackle these challenges, otherwise this market will not develop in the way like the European market did. And Still today, if we are polite, we would say the US market is three to five years behind the European market when it comes to Germany, Austria, Switzerland and Netherlands. If we are open and honest, maybe it's more like five to eight years. And the five obstacles back then, five years ago, they were quality perception, price points, throttle, cheating and e-mountain bike trail access. These were the five obstacles and I think we, we tackled them all. Quality perception number one, this was because initially the e-bike were cheap imported bikes from China, sold through the mass merchants without service, poor quality, and with that you had this perception of an e-bike is not high quality and uh, it is, it's, not, uh, it's not a sustainable product, so, and the dealers, the IBDs wouldn't, wouldn't touch it. So we had to overcome that. And uh, I think with, with quality products and, and innovation and, and a service concept, we, we were convincing dealers in the fast past five years that this is not what they experienced uh, in the time ago. Then price point. Um, this was because of the mass merchant like the Walmart, the Kmart, the exporting goods. There was a very low price point uh, uh, expectation. But we, we see that now uh, um, with premium brands uh, selling through the IBD channel that also the price point expectation and the willingness to pay has increased when it comes to a performing product and system and also to a quality and a, and a service. So we managed that. Then throttle, still a discussion. And uh, initially it, is, it was said, Bosch, if you enter the US market, no way you enter the market without having a throttle. And we said, no. We were taking a conscious decision to say we want to support just cyclists. We want to be seen as cyclists, supporting cyclists. We don't want to be mistaken as, as dirt bikes or motorbikes or whatever. And uh, knowing that e-bike for the US market is a difficult term. In Europe it's super cool, but uh, to use the term e-bike over pedal control, electric bicycle or whatever you can call it. Uh, but we had to learn the hard way that once you say e-bike, everyone thought throttle. And, and that led us to the discussion of cheating. This is wrong, you shouldn't do that. And uh, because with an e-bike, with a throttle, you would cheat on a, on a true cyclist who has to propel the, the pedals to get the electric support. My nicest situation was at Sea Otter Classic 2014 or 15, I can't remember. A dealer came up to our demo uh, area and he said, you shouldn't be here, this is wrong, you should not be at the premises of Sea Otter, go away. I said, why? Because this is cheating, this is wrong. And I said, okay, did you ever write one? It's pedal control, no throttle. No, I never written one. Okay, if without you having the own experience, I don't even talk to you. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> so why don't you get a demo bike and then you go for a ride, you come back and then we talk. And he came back approached me and he said, I hate me for liking it. <laughs> <laughs> so he converted himself from hating it to, to liking it, but it was difficult for him, this, this transformation. But I think this is something that happened in the past five years. If we go back to, to all the comments on pink bike, like three, four years ago, when we started with the first e-mountain bike racing at, at Sea Otter, this was, this was 
difficult. Which, is, which leads us to e-mountain bike trail access and, and IMBA. We know that this is very difficult. That's a global topic. It's not, so, it's not only a US topic. It's the same discussion in, in Germany, in Austria, in Switzerland when it comes to shared trails and trail access. IMBA does a, an, an excellent job also in Europe and also the, the national chapters. But this is a huge discussion and it's for me um, I'm very often in my free time and vacation in, in the European Alps. Um, um, my background is, is hiking and, and climbing and mountaineering of all kind. Um, it's just the poor density of people on trails, especially around a hotspot. And a hotspot is where you can drive too easily, you can park easily, or you take the gondola and around the gondola station. This is a, a hotspot area where everyone to, wants to be on a on weekend. And now the, the trend of urbanization, living in, in an urban area like, like here, this creates a huge counter trend where people want to be in, in, the, in the nature, in, in, the, in, in the woods or uh, out, outside, in the outdoors to, to enjoy, to do sports. And now that we have this overcrowding effect on all the trails and this is a discussion we have worldwide. And this is why we have to tackle this, this is why we have to support IMBAR and other associations. And for that it was very, very important for the US market that the industry uh, had the idea of developing the category class 1, class 2, class 3. This was a very important foundation to build on uh, on uh, the, uh, the understanding that an e-mountain bike, which is pedal control, is equivalent to, the bicy to a bicycle, with ha which has the same rides and UD like a bicycle. I know that is difficult and challenging in, in all areas. I just learned that around here, Whiting Ranch, uh, there are all signs all over with uh, no e-bike. But I think we have to work together as an industry, as a community, to convince people, put them on a bike, uh, have them their own experience that this is a good thing to do for everyone and everyone on an e-bike is one less on a, in a car is one less on a motorbike is one less on a dirt bike so I think it's it's a good thing because once you ride an e-bike which is pedal control you also do something for your own for your health for your fitness which is good for society as well so I think with that the five obstacles uh, most of them we did overcome only the, the topic of e-mountain bike trail access is a challenging and difficult one, so we have to still to work on that. So with that, uh, everyone in the industry has contributed to, to what we have achieved together. And if we, if we look back, it was a lot of hard work, it was a lot of strategic thinking and identifying barriers, identifying partners working together with you. So my thanks go to all of you who are here today and and have supported us and, and believed in us in the past five years. My thanks go to Claudia personally and, and the team that, that she had built up here. And it's, uh, it's really a pleasure to see how, how we have grown in the past. When we were in the first building, now we just moved here. So it's also the inauguration and the housewarming party of, of this new office building, which is really fascinating and cool. So. My, my compliments to that. But we will not stand still. We will continue to be an innovative and a responsible uh, company. Bosch e-bike systems globally um, has, has the approach of bringing new products every year and uh, working on our business model and working together as a reliable partner for, for our, for our uh, partners in the industry, either it's OE or service partner or, or dealers. There are two things. Uh, where we are uh, expanding our, our approach. So the key system is a, a drive unit, a battery, a display and, and diagnostic systems. So this is what we continue to develop and improve. And uh, one thing is, which is very important is safety. And safety has uh, two, two branches. One is infrastructure. So we work worldwide to influence communities and government and to put in more safe infrastructure for cyclists. And second is, uh, is technology. So we launched uh, uh, last year for Europe the first ABS, the anti-lock braking systems for bicycles. It's, it's small in the market development and acceptance, but it took long, very long for automotive, uh, for car ABS and for motorbike as well. So it's, it's for the long, mid to long term future, it's nothing that will happen overnight. So we, 
we have to get the word out, we have to get people riding, riding uh, e-bikes with, with ABS uh, control. Uh, those riders who did ride it, they say it's fascinating, I don't want to ride an, an e-bike without ABS anymore, but the volume is right, right now small and, uh, and we will sooner or later bring it also to the US market. The other topic is uh, connectivity, so the IoT Internet of Things and, and uh, we will have more and more uh, systems which are connected to, to the internet with an app, for app, with a cloud solution, with a back end and a lot of digital services for the OE, for the dealer and also for the end consumer. This is just in, in the beginning right now but there is, there is definitely more to come. So with that, please uh, enjoy the, the three days with us for those of you who were here yesterday. Uh, I hope you had, a, had an, a nice evening together with us, so we think we had a lot of fun. Today is a lot of information presentation that should be like, like a festival, so take, take the time, get all the information in and discuss with each other and, and brainstorm, and this is how we bring the industry forward. And For those of you who join us tomorrow at Sky Park for the test ride, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm here. I'm not here to give a speech. I'm here to ride bikes tomorrow. So thank you very much and a big hand of applause for Claudia and her team. Thank you.